Hi guys, it's Ashra from WizAju, and today we're going to be going through type 4 tree questions, which are simplification of trig expressions. So in a type 4 trig question, basically you'll be asked to simplify a trig expression without the use of a calculator. And you're going to be told that you either need to simplify or evaluate. That's the instruction that you'll be given in the question. Simplify or evaluate this. And an example of a type 4 trig question would be something which looks like this, where you are told to evaluate. See here we have our key instructional keyword, which is evaluate. You could also have been told to simplify the following. And take note that you can't use a calculator. So when you're solving this question here with all these angles, you aren't allowed to use a calculator. So you can't punch 10 to 10 into your calculator to get an answer off. 1 over root 3. You wouldn't be allowed to do that. And see how I immediately went from 10 to 10 to 1 over root 3 uh, just by knowing my special angles and being able to do that mentally. So I really encourage you guys to be able to do that. So these are the types of questions you'll be given. You'll be given lots of trig functions with various numeric arguments, so numeric angles, and most of them will be special angles and you'll be expected to solve these without the use of a calculator. So let's go on to our method. Our method for solving step four trick questions. Step one, convert all negative angles to their positive twins using 360 plus the negative. So if you saw negative 30 degrees sine minus 30 degrees, what you do is you'd take that and say that's equal to sine 360 plus the negative 30 degrees to give you sine 330 degrees, okay? So whenever you see a negative angle, convert it to its positive twin. Step two, all ugly angles, remember I said any angle that's ugly is greater than 90 degrees, you'd have to convert these into pretty angles using reduction formula. So you'd have to make them less than 90 degrees using your supplementary or complementary reduction formula. Step three, if you're not able to use reduction formula, you're going to have to resort to using double and compound angle formula. That's obviously, this would be a step that's exclusive to grade 12, right? Now, step four, you'd make use of the identities sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one and tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta to solve the question. So if you saw sine squared 30 plus cos squared 30, you could immediately replace that with 1. That's your Pythagorean identity. And let's say you saw cos 30 over sine 30. You could immediately replace that with 1 over tan 30 degrees and solve the question. So these are some useful identities you might need to use to solve trick questions. So let's go and try an example of a type 4 trick question just so we can consolidate our method. So for example, we are told to evaluate the following without the use of a calculator. Now, if you've watched my previous video on special angles, which I highly recommend you do, you'd recognize that all of these, these three are, uh, well, these four rather, are ugly siblings of our special angles. So we know we can get numeric equivalents from them. So while it would be easy to say that cos 135, immediately say that's negative one over root two and solve the question, you aren't allowed to immediately replace cos 135 with negative one over root two, because then it's going to look like you used your calculator. While it is easy to do these in your head, your teacher might you might have an argument with your teacher saying, well, I did do this in my head, but you haven't actually shown that you haven't used a calculator. So you are going to have to show your method or your working out on how you got cos 135 to be negative cos 45, and then how you replace that to get negative 1 over root 2. You're going to have to show your working and your method to earn your marks. So step one, 
We don't have any negative angles here, so that's fine, but we have quite a few ugly angles. We have all of these angles, in fact, are greater than 90 degrees. So we're going to have to make use of our reduction formula to get them less than 90 degrees. So we can rewrite cos 135 as cos 180 minus 45. That's going to be multiplied by sine. 135 can again be written as 180 minus, one, uh, mi minus 45. And that's times sine 330, which can be written as 360 minus 30, right? So if you haven't watched the video on supplementary reduction formula and complementary reduction formula, I highly recommend you do that because we're going to be using a lot to solve these questions. Now, cos 225 can be re rewritten as cos 180 plus 45 degrees. And now we can, because we've used supplementary angles the whole way, we can cross all of these supplementary angles out. And because it's S for supplementary, S for same, our trig functions remain the same. So that's going to remain cos 45 degrees. But remember now, you have to always go back and check your original. Cos 135. 135 was in the second quadrant. And we know because of the cost rule, cos is only positive in quadrants 1 and 4. So that's going to be negative cos 45 multiplied by positive sine 45 degrees because sine 135 is positive in the second quadrant. We know sine is positive in quadrant 2. That's going to be multiplied by negative sine 30 degrees because we know 330 is in quadrant 4 where only cos is positive. And all of this is then going to be all over cos 45 degrees. But remember, 225 was in quadrant and only tan is positive in quadrant 3. So that's going to be negative. So you can see how it's equally important to know your cast rule when you're approaching these questions. So knowing where each trig function is positive and negative. So now whilst you could go and say that's going to be equal to negative 1 over root 2 times 1 over root 2 and so forth, that's going to be a bit silly. And why do I say that? Well, you can see that in your numerator and your denominator, you have a negative cos 45. So instead of wasting time substituting for that, you can just go and cross out this negative cos 45 in the numerator with the negative cos 45 in the denominator. So instead of substituting their values in, this is going to save you quite a bit of time. So now all you have to do is find the value of sine 45. You know from your special angles that sine 45 is 1 over root 2, and that's going to be multiplied by negative sine 30, which is in fact negative a half. So your answer is going to be equal to 1 over negative 2 root 2. Now, whilst I've always said that it's better to have um, a rash unrationalized denominator when you're solving questions, in this case, it would have been more beneficial to to substitute in root 2 over 2, because if you wanted to rationalize your denominator in the final step like this, you wouldn't actually have to. So that's going to be equal to root 2 all over negative 4. So this here would be your final answer if you wanted to rationalize your denominator. But if you hadn't, this would be equally correct. So you could have had either of these two as your final answer. It's just, it's, I find it much better to have a rationalized denominator for my final answers. It's just math etiquette. So in harder examples, we're going to have to add an extra step to our method. So the example we just went through was quite an easy example because all the angles we had were special angles and we knew the value for them. But for example, in a question you were given let's say sine 163 degrees. Even if you used your supplementary or complementary reduction formula, you'd eventually get that to be sine 17 degrees, right? Because 180 minus 17 is 163. So without using a calculator, we're not going to know the value of sine 17 degrees. And we know with a type 4 trig question, we aren't allowed to use a calculator. So how would we approach a problem that had this here in the question? 
Well, this is going to be our method. Um, step five, if we're continuing our method from before, is to identify trig functions whose arguments, and an argument means the bit in the bracket. So this bit here in the bracket is the argument of a trig function, more commonly known as the angle. So you need to identify any trig functions with arguments who aren't special angles. So if it's not 30, 45, or 60, so if it isn't any of those, or any of the siblings of the special angles. So in the previous video on special angles, I spoke about knowing your the siblings of the special angles, knowing those ugly siblings, mainly 150, 210, 330, 390, 120, 240, 300, 420, 135, 225, 315, and 405. It's very important to know those so you can recognize when you have one of these angles which aren't special angles or the siblings, so you can tackle them in the appropriate manner. So our step to um, solving this type of question would be to use reduction formula and to make the arguments of these functions equal. So let's say, for example, I had the same sine 163 degrees, right? And that was all divided by cos 107 degrees. Now you can immediately recognize that these aren't special angles and these aren't any of the ugly siblings. And we don't know the value of these. So we're going to have to use steps five and six to solve this type of question. So we're going to make use of reduction formula. That's step five. That would then be sine 180 minus 17, because 180 minus 17 is 163, which is going to give us sine 17 degrees, okay? And these are our numerators. So we have our numerators here. And now for the denominator, we'll look at this, what I've written here for this part in step six. We have to make the arguments of these trig functions equal. So ideally, we want to get a 17 here. So some, some trig function, 17 degrees. So we can either use complementary or supplementary reduction formula uh, to make 107 a pretty angle because at the moment it's bigger than 90 degrees it's ugly so what would happen if we used supplementary reduction formula well this would happen that would then be cos 180 minus 73 degrees but now you can see we're going to get negative cos 73 over here which isn't really going to help us because our arguments are still different we have 17 and 73. So what we're rather going to do is we're going to take this away here and we're going to make use of complementary reduction formula. So instead we're going to say that's going to be cos 90 plus 17 because 90 plus 17 is the same as 107. So co for complementary, co for co-function, our cos is going to change to sine. So that would then become sine 17 degrees because co for complementary, co for co function, our cos is going to change to sine. And remember to always look at your original. We have cos 107 here. 107 is in quadrant two, but cos is only positive in one and four. So that's going to be negative sine 17. And we can cancel our numerators and denominators because they are the same. And we left with that negative. So our answer to this would be negative one. So you can see. For these harder questions where you don't have your special angles or your siblings of your special angles, you're going to use reduction formula and make your arguments the same. And just a tip for these types of questions, you're almost always going to be using one supplementary reduction formula and one complementary reduction formula to get these angles to be the same. Otherwise, then it would be too much of an easy question if you could just use supplementary for both. So you're almost always going to use both supplementary and complementary reduction formula. So let's go ahead and just practice with a, an example of a harder type four trig question in which we have the angles which aren't special angles or siblings of our special angles. So you can immediately see here, we have 63 degrees over here and 27 degrees over here, which aren't special angles or siblings of our special angles. They already uh, less than 90 degrees, so they aren't 50, 45, or 60. So we can't, we don't know the value of them, and we're not allowed to use our calculator to uh, 
uh, find their values. So we're going to have to try to cancel them in some way. And you can see we also have our ugly siblings of our special angles here, which we can go about using our reduction formula to make them into our special angles. So we can evaluate this question without using our calculator. So step one, we don't have any negative angles, but for step two, we do have angles greater than 90 degrees for our ugly siblings. So we're going to use reduction formula to try to get uh, rid of those. So that's then sine 63 degrees multiplied by, and now I'm going to put square brackets here. Why? Because I have a square here, and I'm going to show you how the square can affect your answer a bit later on. So that's going to be plus 180 minus 45, because 180 minus 45 is the same as 35. That's all multiplied by 10, 360 minus 45, because 10, 360 minus 45 is the same as 10, 315. And that's going to be all over sine 180 plus 60 multiplied by 10, 180 minus 50 degrees times. And now we have to see how we're going to make this 27 look like 63. So are we going to, what are we going to do to make 27 look like 63? Well, we know that 27 is in the first quadrant and we have this 90 minus for our complementary reduction formula in the first quadrant. And why would we want to use 90 minus instead of 360 plus? Well, I'll tell you why. We have cos here and we have sine here. So if we want to cancel these, we want to get the trig functions to be the same. We want to either have two sines or two causes. And how we go about doing that is using complementary reduction formula. Because remember, co for complementary, co for co function. If we use complementary reduction formula, we can change the sign here into a cos. So I'm going to rewrite this as cos 90 minus 63 degrees, because 27 plus 63 equals 90. That's why I can do that. So then I'm going to further simplify this. That's going to become sine 63 degrees times, in this case, we're going to have negative cos 45 degrees here, all squared. Why is it negative? Well, why is it negative? Well, we know that 135 over here is in the second quadrant where cos is negative because cos is only positive in quadrants one and four. So you can see how important it is to know the cost rule here. That's going to be multiplied by negative 10, 45 degrees. Why is it negative? 315 is in the third qu fourth quadrant, sorry, and 10 is negative in the fourth quadrant because it's only positive in quadrant three. That's going to be all over negative sine 60 degrees multiplied by 10, 150. 10 is negative in quadrant two, so that's going to be negative 10, 30 degrees multiplied by. Now we have this complementary angle 90 here, so we cross that out and we can change to sine, so that becomes sine 63 degrees. Now you can see we are able to cancel these two here. So we didn't need to know the value of sine 63 or cos 27 to solve this question. By manipulating them in a certain way, we were able to cancel them out. So we didn't need to use a calculator. So now we can further simplify. We can use our special angles to solve the question. So now we have negative 1 over root 2. That's the value of cos 45 all squared times negative 10 45 is negative 1 all over sine 60 is negative root 3 over 2. We have that negative there and tan 30 is 1 over root 3 and that's going to be negative, right? So now, as I said, it's always good to have your square brackets because now I have my square bracket here reminding me to multiply in that negative. So negative 1 over root 2 is going to become positive a half. If you didn't have your square brackets, you might have omitted that and you might have not um, converted that cos 45 to a positive half. And that's going to be times negative 1 all over. And now you can see why I like to have my unrationalized denominator for 10, 30 degrees, because now I'm able to cancel that with that to give me 
positive a half. So now I have positive a half here in the denominator and negative a half in the numerator. So those cancel off and that leaves me with an answer of negative one. So all of this here is equal to negative one, even though we had angles that weren't special angles over here, we were able to still evaluate or simplify this expression without using a calculator. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this explains how to solve, uh, how to simplify and evaluate trig expressions, and you're able to do both the easy and hard examples. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh,